All right, Tribe, you've asked, we listened. You said, how can I get access to my cash in my qualified retirement plans? Today, we've got three main points we're going to cover with you with this roundtable session. One, why we believe the qualified plan is the worst place to invest in and from. This is my favorite point because it is the absolute thing that flies in the face of financial freedom. Your qualified plan is number one holding you back from getting there. That's my take on it. Yeah, no, no doubt. Also, we're going to cover what does it look like if I liquidate it? You need to understand there are rules, there are penalties, there are things, and we want to make sure we do a good job disclosing those. And in point number three, we're going to cover some strategies, actually creative ways where we've observed others, not only some of our coaches share what they're doing, but also way, ways that we've seen others get money out. Some of them paid all the taxes, paid all the penalties, but there are some that actually avoided both taxes and penalties. You're going to, not going to want to miss those. Stay in. This is a long episode. Let's take nothing more away from it. Let's sit down at the round table and belly, belly up. Welcome to the Wealth Without Wall Street podcast, your guide to understanding how to get out of the Wall Street rat race and start your own mailbox money lifestyle. Now, don't let these handsome Southern draws fool you. These financial minds are teaching our country to enhance savings, increase cash flow, and create passive income, all without the help of Wall Street. Are you ready to break through? Now here are your hosts, Russ Morgan and Joey Murray. Welcome into the Financial Freedom Roundtable, where each week we break down complex financial topics so that you can more easily understand them, and more importantly, take action on your path to becoming financially free. If this is your first time joining us, welcome. Grateful to have you in the room. They call me Russ Morgan, the idea guy, mostly because lack of follow to guy just didn't sound so cool to me. But enough about me for a moment. Let me introduce you to my co-host, my partner. He's the Italian stallion. He's got a license plate cover to prove it. Mr. Joy Murray. Stallion, good afternoon. What's up, my brother? Dude, today we're going to break all sorts of rules. We're going okay. to be talking about qualified plans. I mean, we we really kind of have a mm. uh, usually a Airbus rule when that word is brought on the show. So for those who really have kids still around who haven't even heard about these plans, you may want to go earmuffs with them. But we're yes. going to break that rule today so we can talk about the case studies that we have seen of people who try to liquidate and get out of these plans. Can, What's your can, we, can we call this the Shawshank Redemption episode? Like, dude, we are literally, we are, we are about to give people exposure to free Come on. their friends from jail. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that, in my opinion. Uh, yeah. Except for the part where you hide the solution underneath a rock at the end of a, you know, a long wall in the middle of a field somewhere. Yeah. Uh, every time, every time in the movie, I see that I'm like, dude, nobody ran across this in all these years. Like, man, that's, that's strong. But I, I'll be honest with you. I think this is important today because, man, qualified plans are a mirage. Mm-hmm. Let's just be honest. They they are they are here on paper today, but in light of an economic collapse, they are gone tomorrow. And we have this kind of idea, and some people have a something literally standing in their way saying, What well, if I take it out, man, I'm gonna end up with some penalties and taxes and all these things they haven't even quantified that are keeping them from taking action today. And literally a year from now, they're going to say, yeah, you remember that time when I had X amount of dollars in this account and now I have, and it's 50% of that number. Hmm. That's what we're trying to get people to get unstuck today to see their, their possibility of or what this could actually turn into for them. Hey, a lot of times people don't know why, right? They don't understand why this is so important. And our mentor, Nelson Nash, the author of the Becoming Your Own Baker book, he he clearly explained this at the very beginning. He talked about this specific subject. He says, when the government creates a problem, onerous taxation, and then turns around and grants you an exception to the problem that they created, 
i.e. any tax qualified plan, that's 401ks, 403bs, TSPs, EQRPs, self-directed IRAs, traditional IRAs, Roth IRAs, any other of those acronyms that exist out there, aren't you just the slightest suspicious that you're being manipulated, right? Because if they really wanted to give you an exception to the rule, if they really wanted to get rid of taxes, why don't they just eliminate taxes? But that's not what they did. No. So it's important for us to understand these things and what's behind them. And then how do they stand potentially in your way to becoming financially free? But thankfully, you and I are not the only one that's going to be breaking this down. We're surrounded by the dream team of financial coaches today. To my left, I got Mr. Credible. His superpower is speed to financial freedom. And the real beauty of that speed is it's contagious. My man, Mr. J.D. Hill. Say hello to your fans, J.D. Hey, fans. Hey, Rock. Hey, Mark. Hey, Russ. Oh, that was uh, probably my most favorite intro of all time. Thank you for that. Hey, um, I, that's what I'm here for, man. Yeah. Talk to yeah. me. We're, we're breaking down qualified plans today and whether or not someone should liquidate them or maybe to give them examples how others have. Why do you think this is so important for us to cover? Well, I think it's important to cover uh, because most people live in default mode. And when you live in default mode, uh, you default to what everybody else is doing. And the reality is, is that there's a lot of things you can be doing besides that. And when you look at what's happening uh, geopolitically and the economy around us, most people's 401ks and qualified plans and those types of things really aren't doing that awesome right now. Um, they're, they're hanging on by a thread. Uh, mm-hmm. And so I think this could potentially, not potentially, it will, um, give people some, some encouragement, some motivation, um, uh, on on uh, on some options on what they can do to 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 free themselves from that bondage um, of of their qualified plan. Okay, I like that. I like that. Let me get around to the retiree of the group, Mister. Catch me if you can when he's not killing bears with his bare hands or spirit out for tuna. He's right here dropping gold nuggets. The one and only Mark Haraguchi. Welcome, Mark. Oh, great to be back, guys. This is a fun one because uh, I'm, I'm sure you guys have. You know, I, I've shared the story. I've, I've found a couple of ways to liberate my friends. And I think it's as close to biblical as I can get because, you know, let my people go. Um, <laughs> just just let them out, you know, let, let them run wild. This, I think, is really important. Russ, let me ask you this. Have you ever had Chinese food? Of course, yes. Today? But, but, you're, but your parents aren't Chinese. No. So how did you find out about Chinese food? Um, they took me, you got introduced to it. Right. Yes. And so without that introduction, you're, you, 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 have to default to what, you know, which is the, the, the status quo. You can also go to, I, I like the episode in a few good men where they're asking the guy and they're grilling them. They're like, well, you know, this, this, this is your manual, right? Yep. Okay. Well, did you eat while you were down here? Uh, yeah. You know, three, three squares a day. Okay. Can you show me where it says where the mess hall is in this, you know, field guide for Guantanamo Bay? And he's like, uh, it's not in there, but you just told me you ate every time, but it's, you said it's not in the manual. Well, I guess at chow time, I just followed everybody else. So we want to be careful that we're not just following everybody else, but let's get some exposure. Let's start asking other people, hey, what's working for you? What's not working for you? And that's ultimately how you expand your lid so that you can find these other opportunities that are out there. Hmm. Well, this is a moment in time. If you can't handle the truth, then you may want to turn this one off. <laughs> all right man all right i'm so excited to have you guys on here but also i gotta bring in the doctor we got a doctor in the house he's a dfm that's a doctor of financial medicine and yes he can resuscitate your financial situation mr automated budget himself eric hudson great to have you on eric man russ great to be here thank you tell me why do you think it's so important for us to be covering this today Well, Russ, simply this, because qualified plans in our culture today are as ubiquitous as bad haircuts. You've either got one or you've had one. And so if that's the case, we need to talk about it. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man, you guys are bringing the heat today. You got me laughing. That's, That's awesome. I love it. Hey, by the way, you know, there's a, a guy I used to um, go, go see him talk a lot, and he had a great quote. He'd say, 
if what you thought to be true turned out not to be true, then would you want to find out? And the answer was always, well, right now, right? Unless you didn't want to find the truth. Today, we're going to be breaking down what that looks like. So hopefully we'll shine some light on this. But first, I, th I think if we break this into three points, first, why do we believe and that we is wealth without Wall Street, right? Why do we believe that qualified plans are the worst place that you can invest in and from? Point number two that we're going to cover today is what does it look like if I actually liquidate my plan? If I get the money out, what does that look like? What's all involved? Because some of us don't even know that. I remember, Joey, when I was sharing this with you, you were like, oh, I can just go down there to my 401k. I got all the money. And, and then they were like, uh, about that, sir. Yeah. You can't get that. <laughs> That's not, it was sort of your money, but eh, not not really. No, no. Read the manual, as uh, Mark was saying earlier. Read the manual on how you can't get access to your money and the one or two very minute details on how you could get access to this money. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a fact. There was nothing worse than walking into class when you're in school and the teacher saying, pop quiz day. Why? Because you were unprepared. Are you unprepared, though, for financial freedom? Don't be. Find out how close you are by taking our 30-second quiz at wealthwithoutwallstreet.com forward slash quiz. So point number one is why we believe is Wealth Without Wall Street. These are the worst places to invest in and from. Point number two is what does it look like if I did liquidate it? And point number three, let's talk about some creative strategies that we have seen people accomplish it. Right. Not that their situation is like yours, but maybe it'll give you ideas or information that you didn't even know existed that can help you look into and research if this is a road that you're trying to go down and you want to see how others have maybe blazed before you. All right. I'm coming to you first, JD. Why do we, you, believe that qualified plans are the worst place to invest in and from? Why? Well, I have a unique perspective on this, not just because I've participated in one or as Eric said, I've had this bad haircut before, um, but because I actually used to sell them, right? I used to be a financial advisor. I used to have the licenses that gave me permission to sell these types of plans. So I, so I understand them from a consumer level, but I also understand them from an advisory level. And, um, because of that, it's given me insight and perspective to understand now being on the other side, that why I believe a qualified plan is without question, the worst place to invest your money is because it is in direct conflict with your goal of becoming financially free. Right. And explain that to me. So let me explain, Russ, thank you for, for asking me that. So uh, uh, what, I, what I mean by that is once I got crystal clear on a couple of things. One, that I didn't want to wait until I was 60 or older to be able to actually have access to my cash, right? That's, that's my money um, to become quote unquote financially free. Once I realized that that could happen faster, right? It could happen before that time frame where I could actually be in control. I realized that every time I put a dollar into a qualified plan, all it did was just kept delaying that financial freedom date further and further and further away from me. It didn't get closer. It got further away which ultimately became discouraging, right? It became this thing where it's like, oh, I, don't, I don't actually want to keep putting money into here. And then when you deal with the market dropping, well, that's a, that's a big you know, uh, stick in the eye. You know, if the market drops 10%, you don't got to get 10% to break even, Russ. You got to get 11, right? Mm -hmm. Every time the market goes down, you got to get more just to break even than what it went down. Well, I, well I what, but, but JD, but man, the rate of the rate of return is so good. I'm getting a free match on this. Like, I mean, <laughs> how could that be getting me farther away from my goal of financial freedom? I don't understand. Well, that's a farce, uh, first of all, because that match could actually be coming to you as income, right? And it, and it's not. Instead, it's coming to you in the form of of a uh, of a carrot to get you to save into the plan, right? I would even challenge that, J.D., to say that it's not even a carrot to, um, to save into the plan. Does your employer truly care about you saving into the plan? I'm just going to say the answer is no. The employer at the bottom line, you, got, you can peer into their heart, into their soul, and their mind. They are 
trying their best to retain employees. They're really right. trying to recruit and re retain employees. And that's what the Wall Street world has told them. And they say, hey, if you will give them this match, they will put money into it. Not only will they save for their future, hey, you know, Mr. Big Hearted, uh, you know, businessman, we, we know that you will take care of people, but also they will keep at work, right? I mean, businesses don't run without employees. That's right. And when you can get your employees constantly at work and you lock their money up for a good 20, 30, 40 years of their life, they're going to have to be there a while before they get it out. It's called a vesting schedule. <laughs> I had a, um, a friend of mine, his daughter was graduating with an accounting degree and was looking at one of the big four firms to go work with. And he was saying to me, he was helping her look through all the, the documents. One of the things that they had in there is that she could only invest in having only one rental property. She could do no side businesses and only have up to one rental property. Why do you think that they would be really interested in contributing three, 5% into her 401k, but would only allow her to have access to be able to uh, have one rental property on the side? You, you can't be distracted by other things. Well, is that, that that thing could potentially start growing and she see the light and have more. And as that passive income grew, be like, wait a second, I don't want to be an accountant anymore. That's right. Okay. All right. We could. Let's move on. I want, to, I want to hear from you, Aaron. Why do you believe that qualified plans are potentially the worst place to invest in or from? Yeah, Russ, this is really, really simple for me. So, you know, when I was early in my investing in business career, I didn't have a lot to invest. Um, but as time has gone on, I'm in my 50s now. I do a lot of investing. I've got numerous LLCs that I've formed. And the thing that I have done with those LLCs and with my investing is I always invest with a partner. And so I've spent a lot of years building relationships, trying to figure out exactly who's the right person to invest with, because you do not want to invest with the wrong partner. You've got to have somebody that's got the same goals, the same vision, the same values that you do. And man, I got to looking at my qualified accounts and I figured out who my business partner was. Russ, it's the federal government. Oof. That's, that's not, what's Ouch. wrong with that, man? I mean, Uncle, they, got you, deep, they got deep pockets. Uncle Sugar, Uncle, right? Uncle Sugar is your business partner and you don't like Uncle Sugar? I'm telling you, that guy changes his mind just on the regular, daily. And he can't decide how much of the percentage he's going to get today versus what he's going to get tomorrow. He'll tell me what he's going to get today, but he can't promise what he's going to take from me tomorrow is going to be his percentage or cut from our deal. So uh, I, I'm really concerned about my business relationship with, with the federal government. Oh my goodness. Bad part sugar. Yeah. He he's deep in the pockets and he's working with those financial babysitters. I mean, financial advisors, I forgot. Really heavy. They're, they've got a great partnership together. How about you, Mark? Why do you believe that qualified plans are the worst place to invest in and from? Well, my my summary is, is, is just going to be a, a recap of what uh, JD and Eric said, which was I had a defined contribution. I had a pension, and then that company went bankrupt. And so that pension is gone. And then we had a defined contribution and another one. But with each passing month, I noticed I, I really was just getting further and further from that financial freedom metric, which uh, I, I actually looked through my records. And for the entire 22 years that I flew airplanes and was a W-2 worker, um, my qualified retirement plan didn't give me any cash flow. I had absolutely no cash flow from that system. And if, if, if the metric of financial freedom is passive income exceeding my monthly expenses, I got zero from that investment for 22 years. As a matter of fact, I actually got negative because there was a bunch of it that was lost. And they've got these really cool calculators that look really fancy when you go on the website and it says, hey, you know, here's how much has gone into your system. Um, tell us when you want to retire. Tell us how much money you have. And it never met my expectation. It was always asking for more, more more. It was, it was just a greedy system that just kept wanting to take my money. And so I was like, wow, that, that seems fascinating that it's not quite working. And to Eric's point of 
uh, jumping into a partnership with the government, I don't know about you, but their books are pretty messed up. Um, <laughs> and so I don't, I don't think I want that as my business partner because um, they seem to be running in the red uh, quite frequently. They, no they cap. Give, they give no another cow. name to cook in the books, right? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Hey, I was on a podcast yesterday and the guy was asking me this question. Why do you hate 401k so much? And man, I was I was just stealing a lot of the answers you gave there. Uh, all, all of you have been so great in it. And, and one of them, though, I was saying, you know, I, I got to hear David Walker speak one time. And I, I don't, if you don't know who David Walker is, he's a former comptroller general of the United States, basically the CPA for the United States. I think he was in that role for about six years under two different presidents, one both Republican and Democrat. And he told the person that was interviewing him when asked what his thoughts were about taxes and where they were going to go in the future, he said, quote, taxes are going to double in the future because of one four-letter word, math. Mm. the debt, both the current liabilities and the future liabilities on the books of the government, as you were just sitting there talking about, Mark, are so great in order for us to keep up with that debt, in order to, quote, unquote, balance the budget, we're going to have to double the income. Where's the income going to come from? That's right, taxes. Come and on. if we if we're in a partnership with somebody where we're building an asset – we put 50 grand in it and we went and did an amazing thing with that 50 grand and turned it into 200. How much of the 200 do we get to keep? Well, it's not up to us. It's up to our partner, to your point. And I think that's what awakens me to many reasons why I think qualified plans is the worst place to invest and invest from. I don't know how much I'm going to get to keep. How about for you, Stallion? Yeah, no, I, I 100%. Um agree with all that's been said. And I'll just, I'm just going to put you in the mindset that I was in when I decided to liquidate my IRA when I left the big Wells Fargo corporate job. I was in that 401k, I moved it into an IRA and I started to, to think, okay, well, I don't want these penalties. I don't want these taxes, but what are my options? And, and I'll tell you this, the thing that I now know, uh, looking back on it, is the the reason I I really dislike qualified plans as the the it's the worst place to invest in, is because it may be a terrible investor. Like the mental, I, I turned off the creativity of what I could invest in because I was abdicating that to someone else. Mm a money manager who I did not know, had no relationship with, and it was being invested on my behalf, good or bad. It was a completely hands-off roller coaster ride that I was, I was supposedly like putting my trust in. And again, now knowing what I know now, looking back of all the things we've invested in and seeing all the things that are possible, I look at that time that I was investing in 401k as lost opportunity to become the investor that I am today. And if you've been investing in these things, in my opinion, now maybe not everybody was like me, but we have it has a tendency to lull you to sleep and say, eh, that's for somebody else to do. When in actuality, your finances have been entrusted to you to steward yourself. And when you give that up to somebody else, that it just, it literally turns off the creativity in your brain. It, here's one of the things I want to make sure that doesn't get missed, because I know we got to get onto the second point, but I was waiting on one of you to hit this and you didn't. And I think this is the one that sometimes gets missed. Like we can talk about not contributing into these plans again. Don't, don't want to be in these plans, but for so many people, they've, They've done it, right? Like we've already, we already have that dumb tax. Like we put money into these plans. And now what? Like how, okay, you guys have made me think I should not keep contributing into these plans into the future. But what I hear a lot, I mean, Joey, you and I were at a conference in Dallas just a couple of weeks ago. And there was this whole group and whole conversation about how great to invest 
from these type of plans. The EQRP, right? It is the solution of all solutions for people who want to invest in real estate and businesses and syndications with their qualified plans. And I'm listening to this with you and I'm just shaking my head because all I can think of is what would be worse than investing in real estate that provides all of this passive income, that provides all the opportunity for depreciation. And what I'm doing is not able to get any of that depreciation. And I am, if I do an amazing job, I am just creating a bigger and bigger tax burden on myself in the future. Right. Like I, I, I'm not even considering what I am doing, the partnership I am building with the government. Like what you said, Eric, I'm not even considering what all of the implications of that would be as compared to finding a way to get it out and then go use that knowledge of being a better investor and, 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 and building partnerships and businesses that I can then use the tax code truly to my benefit. Cause governments say, Hey, we don't want to be in the business of, uh, you know, owning property, why don't you guys do that for us, right? And if you're going to do that, we're going to give you some tax deduction. Hey, we don't be in the business of um, energy. We'll let you guys do that and we'll give you some tax benefits for it. Oh, we don't want to be in the business of, you know, employing all the people in the world. No, they have become like the 40%, you know, employer of the world at this point. But for the other 60% of you, we'll give you guys some benefits too. Like, exactly. let's do that outside of it. But to your point is, what does it look like if I take it out? What does it look like if I liquidate this plan? J.D., you want to take the first stab at that and start sharing for the person who may not understand all the things that go into what it looks like if I start taking it out, having it maybe even been told what those options are. Yeah, so the the first thing, and and I can speak to this directly because I've done it. Um, you know, I, I've had the bad haircut, Eric. Uh, I'm never going to let that go. Um, the first thing you have to consider is the penalty, right? Uncle Sugar does not like it when you break up with him. He doesn't like it, right? And and so if you break up, you're going to be penalized for it. And so when I got rid of my qualified plan, I had to pay a penalty to get out of that plan. And so that penalty was 10%. I had to, I had to cough up 10% in order to get out of that plan with, with uncle sugar. And at the time, naturally I'm thinking, well, that stinks, right? I didn't necessarily know that going into it. I wish I would have known that before but it made more sense knowing what I was able to do with the capital being in control of being able to pay that penalty and freeing those soldiers to be able to go out into the world and be in control of my financial future. And I, I like the fact that you brought up penalty because that is typically the first thing that is addressed, right? Oh, if you take money out of the 401k or the qualified plan of any nature, you're going to pay a penalty. Mm-hmm. But does anybody ever ask the question, what is the penalty if you keep it in? <laughs> Ouch. No. But that's actually a great question to ask, Russ. What is the penalty for keeping it in? Hey, do you know when I asked that question to my accountant and the other seven accountants that he had me presenting to on this very specific topic? Because that was the first question they said, well, Russ, what about the 10% penalty? I said, can you guys tell me what the penalty is if I keep it in? And they were like, uh... I don't quite understand your question. I was like, can you tell me what the tax penalty is going to be if I keep it in? That's right. And they said, what do you mean by that, Russ? There's not a tax penalty if you keep it in. I said, are you sure? And of course, they don't know the answer. And I said, well, here's my question. Can you tell me exactly what my tax rate will be on the money that I take out in 10, 20, 30, 40 years from now? And one of them piped up and said, Russ, I can't tell you what the depreciation rules are right now. And it was like in October of that year. Yeah. We haven't even been given that so far for this year yet. And we're in the month of October. Yeah. And I was like, exactly. So you don't know what the penalty is going to be if I keep it in, do you? And they're like, hmm, never thought about that. Mark, how about for you? What is What does it look like if I take it out? What else do we need to consider? It looks glorious. 
It's, it's <laughs> just absolutely glorious. Um, it's liberating. It's freeing. Um, you know, there's unicorns, rainbows, cotton candy. Um, it's, you know. A hundred unicorns? Not a not, not, not hundred. It, it, was, it was only 98. It was on sale. Okay. Actually, it was 90 because there was 10% less, um, you know, due to the penalty and all. But <laughs> uh yeah, normally then the next question is if if you get past the 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 ten percent penalty, it's well, but then I'm going to have to pay tax, right? I'm I'm going to have to pay tax on this money, and if but but if I leave it in, I won't have to pay the tax. And and the the, the my thought process on that is you're going to pay that no matter what you do, whether you would have never put it in the first place, they would have they would have taken their pound of flesh then. If you leave it in, we have no idea how much flesh they're going to take on the back end. So. Just deal with the circumstances you know now, pay the piper and move on. But here's the best part too, okay? Those taxes on that money that comes out, that'll be ordinary income. If you've opened your lid enough to think about liberating your people, there are ways to try to mitigate those. There are ways to try to to minimize that impact. And I'm not a tax professional, but each state and each uh, qualified plan is going to be just a little bit different. But there are opportunities in time for you to then defer that actual tax at that moment. The the ten percent Uncle Sugar, he he's coming right away. I mean, before that money even moves, he's already taken his cut. But the ordinary income piece that might be able to be deferred until the tax time of that year. So if you took it out in January, you wouldn't know taxes until April fifteenth of the subsequent year. So wouldn't that be something interesting to know about? Write that down real quick. Well, no, I want to make no, sure. No, that's, shh, one second. Do you ever have to ask him a question that we need to answer in just one second, if that's all right? Yes, sir. Which is, what are some creative ways to actually avoid potentially paying that tax? Mm. That would be a strategy or a case study. And I know that's why you're here, but we've got to allow other people to talk about what does it look like if I take it out? Eric, what does it look like if I take it out? Russ, something's about to happen here live on this podcast. Uh oh, I'm all ears. You guys, the leadership of Wealth Without Wall Street has built their passive income journey on one rule of transparency. Sometimes transparency is ugly. So, everyone listening, I'm about to stand naked before you. Mm. Oof. Some might turn off his camera. Some are turn off the camera. <laughs> Russ and Joey, Wealth Without Wall Street Roundtable podcast listeners. I still have money in qualified plans. Oh no. Oh, oh no. This is the big one. This is the big one. <sighs> it's okay, Eric. This is a safe space. I, I realize I've outed myself on live podcast. <laughs> Uh, I have not contributed to said plans in, I don't know, six, seven years, but there's still those dollars in there. And um, I, along with uh, all those listening, are very interested in what's the right strategies to to maybe pull that out and and to talk about why I haven't done it yet, even though I, I probably have most of those answers. Man, I, I appreciate you doing that. I appreciate you sharing because here's the thing, right? We, we're we going to beat up on this because, well, that's what, just what we do. But at the same time, we all have been there and we all had some of the same thoughts that you're dealing with on that, Eric. And I know there's someone listening right now that's having those same questions. And and if the, the what I would love to make sure I put everyone at ease is, can I become financially free without liquidating my 401k, my IRA, whatever it is. And the answer is yes. Will it take you a lot longer? Probably yes. <laughs> right. But you can still do it and and it's fine. Right. Not, not everybody is comfortable with doing that. And nor we, would we ever recommend doing that until you have the confidence of what to do with it and how you're going to offset some of these things we've been talking about before. Joey, what else would it look like if I took it out? What have we not covered, if anything? Well, can can I just go a little bit further on what you just what you just said is, and it's it's also what I mentioned before. If you're the person that has not 
learned where your investor DNA lies. If you don't know what sort of investor you are, if you haven't unlocked that potential uh, understanding of what to invest in, then I don't blame you for sitting there on this IRA, 401k, whatever it may be, and feeling like nervous to death to take it out. Because guess what? The one thing that gave me confidence to pull the money out of my IRA was I had just previously done a private mortgage loan to somebody for 10%. And I thought to myself, if all I ever did was take the money out of here, go through my infinite banking system and lend it out for 10% money, which I had done twice in the, the year prior to, I can outpace this easily, right? This 10% penalty is a non-issue. And the taxes are a non-issue, as we already mentioned. I'm either going to pay it today, pay it tomorrow. So I might as well have access to my money and at least do this. But if I had not done that private mortgage and seen that I could get 10% interest easily in the marketplace, then I would have been much more concerned about taking it out. And I, there is there is no reason for you to be in that position. And that's why we have things like our Inner Circle Live where we're going to literally introduce you to the experts in the passive income space. And so shameless plug, but I want you to go to wealth.wallstreet.com forward slash live and join us at one of those. And at the very least, get on a call with one of these coaches, 15 minute call, it's free. And they'll walk you through your own right next thing process so that you feel much more confident making moves like this um, not because we told you to, but because it's the best thing for you. It's going to get you closer to financial freedom. Go to wealth.wallstreet.com forward slash free call. Um, but man, that's a real issue. You know, mental, if you have that block, and I don't blame you, but you can take action on it before you make that kind of move. You definitely have to understand the compared to what, right? Like if you don't have anything to compare it to, and until you had done some of those private loans, you probably had only invested in the market. I know you tried to do that diamond deal that didn't quite work out. So that was a great experience for you. But once wow. you're waiting little... on that one to pay out for sure. <laughs> once you have a little p positive feedback and you've saw, saw things happening, many of you are, are flipping land and making 72% in that. You know, a lot of you guys are doing the short-term rental space and earning 20, 25, 30% returns. It is crazy the opportunities we have, but what's the biggest obstacle, Joey, for people to becoming financially free? Having access to capital. Yeah. And for many people that 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 capital resides in an account that they just don't have access to. If you've listened to our show for any length of time, you've heard us talk about infinite banking and how we were able to use that concept to create over $50,000 a month in passive income. But it's just not that easy to figure out how does this all connect into my own personal system? Stallion, that's why we created the Passive Income Operating System, bro. It shows you how to turn active income into passive income. It makes all the steps come together. If you would like to get access to it as a podcast listener, we've never given this away in public before. Go to wealthwhatwallstreet.com forward slash P-I-O-S. All right, let's 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 get on to the real meat of the subject here, where people really wanted to hear what are some of those options? We had to cover the first part, right? Why do we believe what we believe? And what does it look like? Just just trying to, for disclaimer purpose, telling you there, there, are, there are penalties, right? There are things that you need to understand. You can make bad decisions and invest in something that goes to zero. Like all of that stuff exists. But let's talk about some of the creative strategies that are out there and what people are doing with the money and how they've pulled money out for better or for worse. And maybe some of these will give you insights to what's possible. Not that you should follow them or do exactly what they did because your situation is probably different. Highly likely it's different. But this is just things that we have seen. All right, Mark. You personally have experienced some of this, so I'd love for you to start off if it's okay. Oh, I'd love to. I soloed under a lucky star. I was able to liberate just about all of my friends uh, utilizing a provision that came about uh, thanks to COVID. Uh, again, you know, you got to find the COVID lining on every single cloud because it's there. 
And so from that came the CARES Act, which allowed you to liquidate up to uh, 100 grand of your qualified plan and skip the 10% penalty. So Uncle Sugar took back the penalty and I was able to pull my, pull my people out. And then subsequent to that, there was another one that came out. But again, these things have sunset it. And the only reason I know about it is because our community, within our Wealth Without Wall Street inner circle community, shameless plug, Jay Elliott was kind enough to peruse through that type of paperwork because there's no way I'm reading tax law, but he's a CPA and he read it and he knew that that would be valuable to those in the community. And so again, more eyes on the same problem is gonna eventually yield a solution that might work for somebody. And that was one way that I was able to take care of getting those dollars out and skipping that first hurdle that normally holds a lot of people back. But that hurdle also was a different one because as an active employee, you cannot liquidate from a 401k. So as an active employee, I had a 401k. I couldn't get that money out. It was stuck in there. And so the for, the CARES Act and then the subsequent one, uh, HR 132 Consolidated Appropriations Act, oh, love those two, um, allowed me to get my people out. It was pretty awesome. That's so cool. Eric, how about you? You, you got an example that you've seen or heard of some um, one taking money out, liquidating? Yeah, so I, I, I guess I'll just give my own experience of what Mark had just said. Uh, I also utilized that portion of the CARES Act to pull 100K out. And so that worked extremely well. The 10% penalty was waived and you got three years to pay the taxes on it. So that's my only experience with that. So I do want uh, everyone listening to know that I, I have started that process of removing money from the qualified plans. But uh, yeah, that's my experience so far. Hey, well, so basically what I hear you two saying is let's have another COVID so we can have another CARES Act so we can get money freed out of uh, the, the qualified plan situation. Please, for the love, no. No, that'd be a big no. That'd be <laughs> well, a let's no. have a group that has expertise in different areas and people who can find those nuggets for us. Because let's face it, I, I was out running around, you know, hunting, fishing, uh, and enjoying a good old time there. But it was it was thanks to someone else who actually found that nugget. How about you, JD? G give me a couple of examples or one example, at least, that you've seen where people have liquidated uh, a qualified plan. People have what? Liquidated. I'm people sorry. Have... L liquidated? Liquidated, man. Uh... Give me a break right <laughs> here. Hey, Eric, I just want you to know, brother, if I was around you, I'd hug you because I love you, even if you have money inside your qualified plans. Uh, and I will help you get those jokers out of there, just so you know. Uh, I will be your huckleberry. Um, so, so, so a couple of things once this is what's interesting. Once I actually got out of the traditional financial planning space, like the box that most people fit into, I actually started learning about what successful people were doing. And a couple of things that I learned is that the government will actually give you incentives to invest in certain areas of the economy. One in particular is investing in energy. And, and I bring this up because I think it's, it's important to note, like, all this information is readily available to everyone out there. But if you don't have like a community of people that you can uh, glean from, learn from, et cetera, it's really hard to get access to this information because you don't know where to go, right? And our community is just chock full of un unbelievable uh, and phenomenal ideas. Uh, another shameless plug for our community. But so energy, specifically like oil and gas, those types of things, if you invest in that, right? That's a dollar that the government doesn't necessarily have to invest in that. And so they will give you tax incentives to invest in energy. I bring this up because a client of mine, he had a couple hundred thousand dollars sitting in a traditional IRS SEP IRA because he's a, a, a solo uh, entrepreneur. And there was an energy opportunity that came up that he was able to invest into that and get a in this example, a two to one dedu deduction deduction. So he put $200,000 in and was able to wipe out $400,000 off his active income. He got, a, I think he got a refund just to be clear, right. From uncle sugar. So he was able to get all of his capital out, invest it into this passive income opportunity, create passive income and not pay any taxes on getting those, those, uh, th those soldiers out. Is that good? As I heard somewhere that might be good. He was he was a little upset about the ten percent penalty, but ultimately Uncle Sugar still took care of him. Um, so so he covered him. Okay. He, he that's right that's right he covered him. 
Uh, how about you, Stallion? G give me a case study. Give me an example of another place where somebody was able to to free their friends. Well, our, our good friend, Matthew, uh, who could not be on today, has shared this before, so I'm, I don't feel like I'm going on a limb to say it, that he, he was able to liquidate some of his, uh, his qualified money and go and purchase a short-term rental in the mountains. And because of there's certain rules, he also did a cost segregation analysis on that property, which allowed him to, um, to speed up the depreciation process on that property and get more of those tax dollars coming back towards him. And then subsequently he qualified as a real estate professional under the short-term rental guidelines. I'm not sure if that's what you call them. And um, because he was managing that property and was therefore able to get even more tax incentive to come back. So all in all, it, uh, it created a massive win for him to create the passive income and knock out all the tax liability. Again, I haven't seen his, his numbers perfectly, but that's what he shared with us over and over. And uh, yeah, really grateful that he was able to find that, that uh, area of the tax code that allowed him to take advantage of that. It, it pays to look, right? It pays to research the 7,000 pages that are after the first seven that describe income, that describe all the exceptions to the rule. I mean, there's lots of these. There's a, a thing called a 72T, where you can take out equal annual distributions up until age 59 or five years, whichever one is longer, and you can actually avoid the 10% penalty. Most people don't even know that even exists. Right. So, Eric, if you wanted to get money out, I I could take you to the the tax law that shows where you can take out equal annual distributions out of that plan for the next five years or to age 59 and a half, whichever is longer and, and avoid paying a 10 percent penalty. There is a plan for you. Now, there's penalties if you stop that plan before 59 and a half or five years, whichever is longer. But as long as you want to get the money out and you start it. I've seen many, many, many of the members in the Wealth White Wall Street community that's done that. I've even seen people who have went and bought property. And J.D., you were talking about how the government will give uh, tax deductions and benefits to those who will invest in the research of energy and things like that. Well, did you know that they will also give tax benefits to those who will conserve the earth that will will protect it that will prevent uh, people from building on it right there's a lot of people space. out there yeah yeah that they, they want to have these land trusts where it will always forever and ever be just earth trees no buildings no parking lots all that stuff well i've seen somebody who actually did that they took money out of their 401k or out of their former 401k it was a, a previous employer and we took that cash and, and invested in land, went through the whole process of getting it uh, uh, conserved, and then was able to receive the tax benefit for the conservation because the government basically gave them the difference between what the value of the land used to be and what its highest and best use was down to what it now, because it can never be built on again. And they gave them that as a deduction against their income. So they offset all of that income that they were going to supposedly have to show. And then now they were able to take that money that they didn't have to pay in tax on not only that, but also the rest of their income that they had made that year and go invest and create passive income from it. There's so many examples of this. You just, if you're interested, you want to find the way out, you can, but maybe you, you can't find it. Maybe you don't know where to look. Maybe you end up being like a, a, a dentist friend of ours who came on the podcast years ago and just cashed it out. Just took it on the chin. Just said, you know what? I know that the best plan for me is not keeping it in here. And I'm going to now be motivated to figure out a way to offset the penalty that I just paid by getting it all out all at once. And I think that that's what you were saying a second ago, Stallion, is that when you have money in, you're just lazy. You don't, you're not being uh, forced to become a better investor because somebody else is just doing it on your behalf. But when you put the money in your hands, now you have to become a better investor. You start looking for ways. And at the minimum, maybe that's what you should be looking at. So this has been great. We've covered both why we believe that this is 
one of the worst places to invest in and from. We also talked about what does it look like if I take it out? And we gave you some examples of ways that people have done it creatively. Maybe some of those would give you insights to what you could do. I'm going to go around the table, guys, really quickly. I know we're long here. Final thoughts, Mr. Eric Hudson. Yeah, um, I'm going to throw out two um, random names here. Michael Jordan, Tiger Woods. I'm sure most people have heard of those two guys. You know, it's interesting about those two guys considered probably the best to ever do what they did ever on the highest level. Both of those guys had coaches. Because sometimes for yourself, you cannot see the forest for the trees. And I would say for me, even though almost everything we've talked about today, I'm aware of, would be so comfortable talking other people through it. Sometimes when it's yourself, it's, it's harder. So it's very important for you to find somebody in your life that can speak into your life in many areas, but financially, especially, I would say, and um, help you sort through um, your current situation. So I, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, Russ, less 72 T this thing, cash me outside. Let's go. Okay. Uh, I'll meet you at the door. JD Hill, final thought. Um, look, you can't solve problems unless the problem exists. Right. And what I mean is, is that if you want to figure out a way to start learning how to get creative, create a problem. <laughs> and, and that's one of the things that I, I, I that's not a recommendation. That's not advice. I'm sorry. Everybody's <laughs> laughing at me. <laughs> But seriously, though, right? Like if you want to figure out like how to get creative and what you can do to have to fix something is you got to create something. You got to break something. You know what I mean? Um, and so if, if, if you don't get creative, right, because a problem exists, then you'll just keep doing exactly what you're doing. I tend to work better with my back against the wall. I tend to work better if, if I have to have something that forces me to get creative and learn how to solve a problem. So I tend to make problems that probably most people wouldn't make on their own. So I'll go in and be like, oh, this seems like a good idea without actually thinking it through and then do it like, Oh, I just created a problem and now I got to fix it. Uh, and so my point is, is that don't be scared to make, um, uh, decisions that maybe you wouldn't ordinarily have made. Right. Uh, because it's an opportunity for you to grow and to learn. Uh, and so this, this has been something that I've certainly learned and grown from. And we've had a lot of clients that have also learned and grown from it as well. Yeah. I think I, I heard a pastor, somebody said in order to create a message, you got to create a mess. I think that's where you were going, somewhere similar to that. All right, Mark, how about you? Final thought. Is what you're doing working? Is what you're doing getting you where you want to go and getting you there fast enough? If it's not, are you open to exploring an alternative option? And that's what this is about. If what you're doing is working, hey, fantastic. Uh, more power to you. I'm super excited for you. However, if it's not, if it's not working and you are recognizing, hey, this isn't quite where I want to be and I don't think it's going to get me where I want to go, let's talk about options because that's all we're here to do is help you see different options. All about the options. Dalian, final thought. Unfortunately, we've done you a great disservice today because now you have exposure and you have understanding and now you have to do something with it. Right. There's action that has to be taken from this podcast. Number one, if you're the person who has been holding on to this money because you don't know what to do and it, it makes you scared to death to think about losing it all, you have something you can do. You need to join a mastermind, if not our someone, and learn from mentors and from others, from peers who are already down the road learning this stuff themselves. If you have already become an investor and this has been holding you up thinking, man, I don't want to pay the penalty. I don't want to pay the taxes. Like this is just, I'll just invest from some other bucket and just deal with this later. You have exposure now to understand that you're actually creating a time bomb, right? You're creating a position that you don't want to be in. And you now have something you could take action on. Get with one of these coaches and get access to your funds so that you can now start investing properly and in control. So that's my takeaway is you got, you got some action to take from this and uh, we're here to, to help you along the way. Coaches, Stallion, thank you so much for 
bringing so much value today. Thank you for listening to this podcast. If you found value in it, rate and review it. Share it with somebody else who may need to hear this message. Maybe you have already let your people go, as Mark says, and but they haven't. And they're nervous. They don't understand all the different ins and outs. Maybe this podcast could help encourage them. As always, thank you for listening. Have an amazing day. This has been the Wealth Without Wall Street podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to the show to break free of the Wall Street mindset and begin building wealth on your own terms in places you understand so that your wealth will never run dry. See you next episode.